Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rachel Herr, and I'm the Member Engagement Manager for the Southwest Indiana Chamber. And I am the staff member who serves as the liaison for our Young Professionals Group. We have a lot of members of our Young Professional Steering Committee on here today as well. And we're all so excited to welcome you and we are very grateful that you're choosing to spend the afternoon with us today. We're trying to still be active despite COVID and um, like everyone else, get innovative. So we are going to welcome our mayor today. I'm sure most of you are familiar with him, but we are so excited to have Table Talk with Mayor Winicky today. We also have with us the Deputy Mayor, Steve Schaefer, and then we also have the Mayor's Director of Communications, Noah Stubb. So we will have um, here from all three of them throughout this, just some housekeeping things. Please mute yourselves. If you have questions as we go, please put them in the chat. And there is a poll that popped up probably as soon as you logged in. So if you all don't mind, just before you all log out, if you have to go early or before we wrap up, if you could please answer that just to give us some brief feedback. So thank you so much. Outside of that, I will go ahead and hand it over to the mayor and Steve and Noah. Um, Steve, do you want to kind of start us off and then just Noah, you can take it away with letting us know how we as young professionals can get involved here in our community. Uh, sure. Uh, I, I didn't know if Brandon had any, any uh, an intro of myself. Um, you know, I, I, I sent him a three page uh, intro about my background and my education and my all of my accomplishments, but nobody's smiling or laughing. So, I can, um, Steve, I can recite it by memory if, if needed. <laughs> that was part of the job interview. No, uh, greatly appreciate everybody tuning in uh, today with table talk with Mayor Lloyd Winky. Um, it, it's it's a great um, great series and an idea. Um, I'd like to. Thank the Chamber and the Young Professional Alliance for starting the series. Um, I always believe that the best education comes from, you know, your experiences or the wisdom uh, that's shared by others. Um, I almost said uh, I almost said elders, but I do like my job. So, <laughs> at least the mayor's laughing at that one. Uh, I've had the privilege to work with uh, Mayor Winicky since the beginning, uh, which seems lifetimes ago. Uh, but a great lifetime. Uh, we, we met a couple years um, uh, before he took office. Actually, I was still a young professional, uh, actually involved in this organization when it was still called the Young Evansville Professionals. And just for proof, I, I still have the plaque where I was chairman of the organization. <laughs> I had to. Um, everybody's impressed, right? No. Uh, very, I'm impressed with how the chamber has taken the organization to the next level. So, um, give all of you a round of applause. This, uh, the, the crowd of young professionals that I see on the screen, it's, it's very impressive and, and I hope you continue. Uh, if you didn't already know, I'm a very, I'm a staunch defender, supporter, cheerleader of Mayor Winicky uh, for ma many, many reasons. Uh, he has an impressive list of accomplishments but I'm sure there's some things that you don't know about the mayor. So, you know, I, I thought I'd go a little off script um, and maybe to get them get to know the mayor, <laughs> he has his bat already. Uh, but to get to know him a little better, um, I thought maybe a lightning round of 10 questions. Uh, the mayor can just give a short answer and, and we'll we'll go from there. Uh, sound good, everyone, everybody? Okay, I know it wasn't part of the script, but um, it's, it's kind of how we roll. I wondered why you were walking around the office with a smirk on your face a few minutes ago. <laughs> there's, there's nothing, nothing. Um, yeah, these are harmless. Are, are you ready, Mayor? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, here's an easy one to start off. Uh, if you could just, for everybody here, name your immediate family members and where they live. Hi. Uh, my wife, Carol, lives in Evansville with me. Um, my daughter, Danielle, uh, lives in Tucson with her husband, Steve. Danielle is a social worker uh, for the state of Arizona. Her husband, Steve, is a Border Patrol agent, and they have two sons, Holden, 13, and Oliver, 8. 
Awesome. Uh, so what were the, the mascots of your grade school, high school, and college? Uh, Springtown Chargers, Tompkins Jets, Central Bears, and Purple Ace. Ah. What uh, were three jobs that you had prior to being mayor at any time? At any time? Yeah. Okay. Here's one that will uh, be sure to astonish. Uh, I worked at the what was the Sunset Drive-In on Highway 41. Uh, there was a BMV a little, in the little strip center there. That used to be a whole drive-in movie theater. I worked uh, in the concession stands uh, there. I made pizzas and burgers in high school and college, and I worked at a number of radio stations in, in college. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see. I know your, your favorite team is the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, but who is your favorite athlete of all time, any sport or level? Wow, that, you know, I think because he's been top of mind, I'd say Bob Gibson. Oh, huh. okay. He recently passed away and he was a childhood idol of mine. So. Okay, good answer. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, number five, who is your best friend? <laughs> <laughs> The list is long. Oh, okay. Well, we'll take that one. Uh, number six, if you were the winner of the Nut Club Half Pot, what would you spend it on? Well, there are a lot of ways to answer that. Um, I'd probably uh, secure my grandson's college education first, and then there's a whole slew of nonprofits here I would write nice check. Okay, what would you spend it on yourself? Like something fun. Come oh, on. I don't know. I need some new golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, might get, I might get a new car. <laughs> Nothing for me, your, be your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> See a theme for you. Uh, what Netflix show have you binged recently? Ooh. Binge watched? Uh, Offspring. Offspring. Haven't seen that one. Okay, uh, favorite superhero? Batman. Wrong. Uh, what is your number one hobby or pastime? Golf. Okay, and finally, uh, what's, the, what are, what's the best memory that you can think of so far as mayor? Wow, there have been a lot. Uh, one of them that just will totally make you laugh, so I'm gonna say this. <laughs> uh, Conducting the Evansville Philharmonic Orchestra. Of course. <laughs> uh, here's a bonus question. What's your favorite show tune? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that was inside baseball. Uh, now let's, uh, I think that that gives everybody kind of an insight, some of the mayor and, and some of his likes and dislikes. Uh, but now for the formal part of the interview, serious, serious questions that I was provided. <laughs> that I may or may not follow. Uh, and, and just so everybody knows, if you wanna ask uh, a question yourself, feel free to uh, jot it down in the chat box. And, and, and if we have time, we'll, we'll ask it at the end. So, uh, Mayor, uh, can I call you Lloyd? Yes, you may. <laughs> well, Lloyd, uh, COVID-19 has dominated our lives since March. Uh, this morning, there was another related announcement about UE basketball in the Ford Center. Uh, can you share your outlook on the pandemic and what message do you want to send to everyone watching? That's the first part. Well, yeah, we could be here the entire rest of the time talking about COVID. You know, I, um, COVID is certainly, every time we think we have a plan and we're ready to go, we have to pivot to something new. Uh, today's announcement relating to fans in the stands to start the season for Aces games, you know, we thought we thought that was we had that sort of that box checked weeks ago. But as the numbers continue to climb, and we evaluate them every day, um, you know, we knew things had to change. So one of the one of the things I've said many times is 
while the none of the decisions that we have made since the pandemic began have been made lightly, they have been made a little easier in the sense that there's this really great collaboration. So when the numbers started spiking the way they are now, it was an easy conversation with President Petroskevich and his team because they involved not just the city and the university, but doctors from Deaconess and Ascension St. Vincent in the health department. Um, all the decisions we have made, we have made with uh, advice and counsel from people who are experts in the field. So I think that uh, that's one thing I would like, and I think people understand that we're not just down here making decisions that we think are gonna please one group of people and not please another group. Uh, we, take, we take the idea, the concept of public health really seriously. Uh, we text, call, uh, email, the hospitals. I mean, I'm not just talking administrators, but doctors who are, you know, really doing a lot of heavy lifting, the health department. I mean, constantly. Uh, I, I would guess, you know, we easily spend 70%, 60 to 70% of our time right now on COVID related issues. You know, it, it's it's all very serious, and uh, you know we all have fatigue um, during the during the pandemic. Uh, there have been some lighter moments. Um, your hair got statewide coverage uh, during one of Gov Governor Holcomb's uh, briefings, daily briefings. How long did you go without a haircut? This is an actual question I was given. So. Uh, three months. Three months, and right. usually I, I'm a like, I'm blessed to have a lot of hair. Well, a little less than eight years, nine years ago, but generally a lot. Uh, it was, it hadn't been that long since college. Um, and I, I mean, I did not get it even trimmed in that time. I mean, it was three months almost to the day. Huh. Fascinating. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of uh, one of the frequent quotes that that you are noted to say is uh, a couple years ago, take a picture uh, of downtown because it won't look the same in five years. Uh, that's pretty obvious from uh, 2012 uh, when you took office. Uh, in addition to the convention hotel, med school, post house, um, you know, the nightlife is is a is a huge thing for uh, our city. Um, and, and a big part of the quality of life efforts uh, to retain young professionals. How are the, the cultural districts, Haney's Corner, Franklin Street, uh, downtown, uh, making a difference? Well, I, I think because it, you can easily say it, it's not your father or grandfather's Franklin Street or your father or grandfather's Haney's Corner. Uh, it has all evolved and uh, almost, especially on the west side, I mean, almost all organic. You know, people have taken risks, small business owners have taken risks to start a bar, a restaurant, and pandemic aside, they've been very, very successful. So, uh, you know, although I'm not a young professional, I think I sort of act and play like one. So, you know, the fact that the fact that we have so many places to go to on Franklin Street or in Haney Square, I mean, that's attractive to me. I mean, I, I, I can only imagine how, how attractive it is to someone who's not, not my age. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a, it's a draw. And you know, when we talk to business leaders who are thinking about bringing their company here, who are thinking about expanding, the number, the number one thing they talk about is not what incentives can we get? Incentives are important and education's important, but they're really worried about the quality of life. When they hire employees, is there enough fun stuff for them to do to keep them here and keep them engaged in their work, workforce engagement? And so, you know, as things continue to, you know, to build and thrive and, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Franklin Street or Haney's Corner, uh, there's some really nice activity happening on North Main Street, the you know multiple corridors on the east side. That's all good. That's that's it's part of. I mean, it's really part of what we're doing from an economic development standpoint that helps draw investment to our region. 
Uh, this platform, obviously, a lot of young professionals uh, here uh, involved in the community. Uh, you continually say that that you would like to get younger uh, younger people, younger uh, future leaders involved, whether it's on boards and commissions uh, or community wide initiatives. Uh, what are some of those opportunities, and and how can uh, individuals uh, get engaged. And, and I think Noah is going to help us with this one since uh, he's going to share a screen. Yeah, before you share the screen, Noah, let me show. So I have this, I'm going to pull back here. So this is an eight page spreadsheet that details all the boards and commissions that uh, we have appointments to. This happens to be a little bit of an off year. There are years when we'll have 85 or 90 appointments to make almost all at the end of the year. So no, if you want to share the screen anytime, that's fine. Uh, so it's a, serving on boards and commissions is a chance for you to get involved in your community uh, at what really whatever level you want. Uh, the web, website is very uh, navigable. There are descriptions of not long ones, but just general descriptions on every board and commission that I have, or the county commissioners have, or city council, or the county council. Um, and, you know, you ought to go through and say, and, and look at what might be uh, interesting to you, and then apply. Uh, it's always good to, you know, sort of give us a heads up if you're interested in something. Um, this year, again, we, we don't have nearly as many. And a lot of times we have people who are, you know, really committed to a board or a commission. And they want to, you know, they want to uh, stay on it. But many times we're kind of scrambling around looking for people who want to be involved. And I, I think one of my many jobs as mayor is to help identify a new, a new generation of leaders. And you know, this is one way uh, that I would tell you you can get involved uh, potentially if you're interested. I mean, everything from um, um, let's see, what are you looking at here? You know, the, the Affordable Housing Fund Advisory Committee, uh, the Animal Control and Education Committee, uh, the Board of Examiners uh, for Roofing, uh, the Board of Works. I mean, there's, I mean, literally there are stats and stats and stats of uh, boards and commissions that uh, everyone needs appointments to. I'm not the only one who makes appointments. Again, the commissioners do, both the city and county councils do. So if I don't have an appointment that's up, but you see something that is really of interest to you, you, know, you could reach out to one of those other appointing bodies to, to uh, express your, your interest. Um, it's, it, the, the website, as, you, as Noah's driving through, again, it's very navigable, uh, really easy to find out what people do, what the expectations are, how frequent the meetings are. Um, you know, some, some boards and commissions are more controversial than others. Um, some will never be covered by any media organizations and some will be carried uh, covered by at, at every meeting. So it's, it just kind of runs the gamut there. And Mayor, uh, uh, Annie asked the question, do you have to live in Vanover County or in the city of Evansville to be on the boards? And some, and, and I think best way to say it is more than likely for a majority of the boards, yes, there is a re residency requirement. Uh, each board or commission has its own set of uh, re requirements. Uh, you know, some require, um, whether it's, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, Mayor, can you give an example of one with a specified uh, talent or trait or skill that's needed? Yeah, so there are, uh, Noah, if you scroll down to the, um... Just keep going there. I'll see it when I know it when I uh, there. Back up one. There you go. The Board of Examiners of HVAC, steam fitters, and refrigeration installers. Uh, obviously, this is not just for anyone. So, someone with a very specified background in HVAC and refrigeration. Uh, this is an oversight board. I just I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'll bet you that is a Vandenberg County residency requirement. If you wanted to be on the Evansville Redevelopment Commission, conversely, you would have to live in the city of Evansville. So the residency is really kind of governed by uh, whether it's a, a covered by state statute or local ordinance. Great. Uh, 
Great. You know, I think the only other thing that I'll add is that most of these boards or a lot of these boards are actually recorded and you can uh, access them on our website as well, evansvogov.org slash city. Uh, if you go to the main page, there is a link to watch meetings online. And most of the, or a lot of the major meetings, uh, board meetings, you can watch live. Uh, but uh, you can you can search for uh, archived uh, video events as well. Uh, so you'll see a lot of these boards and commissions uh, listed here. You can click the link uh, and look at their agendas uh, before the meeting uh, happens. You can kind of flip through and get an idea of what they'll be talking about. Uh, but this is a great way to, uh, if you are or, or, or if you are flipping through our website and see a board that you're interested in, uh, you can you can watch that meeting online and get to know uh, more about what is going on in, in that board. Perfect. And you can send us a, an, uh, an email if you have any other questions and we can connect you. And I, and I would tell you this, even if we, you know, if you if you really want to have an interest in something and maybe we don't have an appointment available, but another body does. If you don't know anyone there, we're happy to you know, let us know. We're happy to make a, a connection for you. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, our economic development officials uh, in our corporate community are always looking to the future. And currently there's an initiative called uh, Talent 2025 underway. Uh, can, can you share your um, your thoughts, uh, give a quick overview and how young professionals uh, fit into that equation, that initiative? Yeah, so Talent 2025 really started probably, I don't know, I've got a little COVID brain, so I want to say two, two and a half years ago. Um, but it really started out with uh, a desire by the corporate community and a number of other uh, governmental leaders to understand what economic metrics we ought to be looking at as a community, as a city, and as a region to help uh, leverage all of our assets. So uh, we engaged a consultant to come in and study study the, the region. Again, you'll notice I use that word a lot, uh, every which way. And the whole idea was to, behind Talent 2025, is uh, so that we can develop Southwest Indiana, the greater Evansville area, uh, into being the, the talent and economic sort of a hub or des most desired region in the Midwest. And so we broke out in various buckets and looked at where we can improve. So we've identified population growth as one of those. Uh, obviously every community wants to do, want, wants to have a higher population. This is a census year uh, because of COVID, no one really knows what to expect, but obviously uh, we want a, a higher number. Uh, I would love for the first two numbers of our new census, uh, our new population to be one and two. Uh, the more people you have in your community, the more federal dollars that flow to your community. So it behooves us to have more people. So um, population growth is one of those. Uh, employment and wage growth is, is another bucket that we have a whole team working on. Uh, again, we're trying to make sure that people have the skills to go to a net new level of employment. If you are involved in a job that is facing uh, new technology, maybe there are gonna be fewer jobs in this field, but you need greater, you know, more IT skills or a greater technical skill. We wanna make sure you have that ability to go take your, uh, your, your skill set to another level so you can uh, earn more money. Educational attainment is a third bucket that we're spending time on. So how can we, one, increase the number of high school graduates uh, in our city? And secondly, how can we uh, increase the number of people who have uh, a, a, a post-secondary certificate or uh, a post-secondary uh, degree of some kind? Uh, community health is a fourth bucket we're looking at. Uh, it is no secret that our broader community health, COVID aside, is not the greatest. We're known, uh, sadly, for being uh, generally an obese uh, region uh, with a lot of underlying health conditions. 
So we want to look at how we can make uh, our city and our region uh, healthier. And the last thing that we're really spending, and these were in no order, uh, is poverty redu reduction. We need to reduce the number of people who are in poverty, and that number is an alarming number. So the idea behind Talent 2025 is develop specific strategies in each of those five buckets, if you will, that can be very specific for the objective of making our region a really desirable location or region for uh, to, to live, work, and play. So uh, the Evansville Regional Business Committee, the ERBC, is leading this. Jeff Whiteside, formerly of Vectran, uh, is the executive director of Talent 2025. And there are people who are overseeing uh, each of those work streams that I've described. Uh, but Jeff, Jeff is sort of the, the quarterback of that. Um, I would tell you that this is arguably uh, the most important work of this kind that our, our community has undertaken. Uh, it's about identifying, again, those work streams and strategies in those work streams that can make us better. And, um, and, and there's a lot of, as you can imagine, um, cross, uh, cross pollination, if you will, I'm not sure of a better phrase, but a lot of, a, a lot of back and forth between those work streams that, uh, that is really vital to the success of Talent 2025. It, it, like everything else, got a little bit of delayed when the pandemic broke out, um, but it is now up and running and those work streams are, are filing full steam ahead. Great. Let's see. Uh, here was a, a Brandon question um, and, and a bit of a legacy one. Uh, what impact do you want to have on young professionals uh, of Evansville after your final term is up as mayor of Evansville? And before you answer, we don't expect that final term to be anytime soon. We, I like my job. <laughs> I'm just saying. So anyways, what kind of legacy? For young professionals. Yeah, so I, I kind of touched on it earlier, and that is to um, help generate a new or create a new generation of, of, of new leaders. Um, I joked about my, I'm, I just turned 60. I, I feel like I'm 30. Um, and most of the time I act like I'm 20. Um, but you know, I'm not going to do this job forever. Steve's not going to do his job forever. Who's going to do it next? When I worked at Fifth Third Bank uh, a long time ago, I was I was a task to do the uh, to be the United Way coordinator for the bank. And I looked up at all these community leaders that were in charge of the United Way that were doing the they were on the United Way cabinet at that time. I'm thinking, man, who's going to do that next? And I think, you know, I would hope that all of you and, you know, all of your, your peers and colleagues are looking to, will look to do the same. What, what can I do to better the community? Maybe it's with a not-for-profit organization. Maybe with a, it's, a, it's a faith community. Uh, it doesn't have to be in government. It doesn't mean you have to run for mayor or city council or dog catcher. But everyone has a role to give back. And I, you know, I hope, I hope someone you know, years from now, we'll say, you know, I talked, I heard the mayor talk one day and he really pushed us and really challenges to step up and, and do something in our community outside of just going to work and going to play every day and night. So, you know, I, that might sound, sound a little cheesy, but I, I think that's the role, one role of anyone who's in an elected leadership position. Let's see here. Um, I guess let, let's talk more globally, kind of, um, and, and this isn't just a specific question on the election itself, but, uh, you know, with, with an election, a pandemic, uh, we have all these other national events that have happened over the past couple months. How do you think our community has responded, um, you know, or, or, is, or handles, uh, whether it be peaceful protests or rallies, um, you know, just, just the overall mood. It, it seems sometimes Evansville, Vanderbilt County is in its own little bubble, but, you know, these larger scale issues are impacting every community. And I, I'm just curious your thoughts on how 
how you think our community has has gone through this and handled it. You know, I, I would um, I would give our community really high marks. Uh, and, and you're right, there are different categories, so maybe slightly different marks for different categories. Uh, but in terms of reacting to uh, social injustice and racial inequities in our country and in the world, I would think, you know, I'd give our community very high marks. You know, when you saw a lot of non-peaceful protests in other cities, uh, some in Indiana, in Fort Wayne and Indianapolis, uh, there was some widespread urban looting and, and rioting, and you didn't see that here. And I think I attribute a lot of that to relationships. Uh, and I'm not saying we're, we're the best. I think we're better than most, though. Um, you know, I, I think when it comes time to, uh, when you see, see something happening in other communities, our community is quick to pull the right people together to figure out solutions that help our community. And I think, I think we're, again, better than most at that. I talk to mayors around the state frequently, and you know, I think a lot of mayors would like to have our problems versus the problems they have. Um, you know, politically, yeah, it's a really charged environment. And um, I certainly have my opinions on stuff, but I don't think me expressing my opinions about the politics of the world uh, does anything to advance uh, what we're trying to do at City Hall every day, and that's to try and, and make Evansville uh, a better place. And I think um, I, I think there's certainly a, a place for a difference in opinion. That's what's made our, our country great. And, and frankly, we welcome that in this office. Um, I think one of the reasons we've had success in nine years in office, if I may be so bold, uh, is because we invite and listen to different opinions. And you know, maybe there are opinions we'd never considered before, uh, but I, I think at a minimum, at a very minimum, our citizens or citizens in any, any community want to feel like they're being heard. And I, I think, I, I'm, not think, I'm confident that we do give people an opportunity to be heard. I agree, and, and for those that don't know, at the beginning of your administration, you had the visioning process uh, with leadership, uh, Evansville, uh, leadership everyone, uh, whole wide community visioning process. So that was a big part of it. Um, back to COVID-19, um, it, it continues to impact everybody. We know that wearing a mask, social distancing, good hygiene are important, uh, and everyone has fatigue uh, as we've been living differently for, for months now. What is something that um, you enjoy doing now at home that maybe you didn't uh, know that you liked doing before? <laughs> well, I'm on my third jigsaw puzzle. And as a kid, my mom and dad did them every winter. And I thought that was the dumbest thing in the world. And uh, so I have done, but I don't do just any jigsaw puzzle. So the first jigsaw puzzle I did uh, during the pandemic was um, were box topped to games from like the 60s and 70s. So like, like Operation and Old Maid and all these kinds of things, thousand pieces and I, I did that. And my next one was equally fun. It was uh, cereal boxes of all General Mills cereal. So, you know, Count Chocolates, all that kind of silly stuff. So I did that, and the one I'm on now, and I just, uh, I, I did the edge pretty quickly. I let it sit because I want winter to come on with the colder weather, and it is uh, decorated donuts. So uh, a lot of different, different colors of icing and sprinkles and whatnot. So um, it, it's, it's pretty easy for me, especially when the weather is not so great, I can't be outside. Uh, to stand over the, the dining room table and work on that for an hour, hour and a half. And that, that really helps me un unwind. So um, if you could give uh, any advice or challenge, uh, you like giving challenges uh, to people when you, when you do type of presentations and so forth, uh, or you know, for any citizen of Evansville, what would it be? 
to this group? Well, for this group, I think it's important that you be open to new opportunities. So my degree is in communications. I spent 18 years in television news. I thought I would do that. I mean, I loved every day, almost every day of that career. And then all of a sudden, a friend of mine who was then the CEO of what was Citizens Bank, now Fifth Third, said, hey, we, we need to change our name and we need to, someone to oversee the marketing of that name change. Are you interested? Like, wow, I've never thought about not doing anything other than that, but the money was better. You got all those great Monday holidays. And you know, I thought, I'll give this a chance. Um, the first several months, I didn't get why people were scooting out before five o'clock because in television news, you know, back in those days, the news didn't start until five, now it starts at four. Um, so I, that took some getting used to. Uh, and, and I was always inter interested in government and politics. And then when Russell Lloyd was elected mayor in 1999, someone said, hey, you know, you ought to run for his unexpired term on the county council. I'm like, eh, I like it, but I don't know if I want to put my neck out there like that. Well, I did. And then, then Bill Nix said, well, I'm not going to run for county commissioner again. You should run for that. So I did that. And then, then all of a sudden there was an open seat for mayor and someone, several people said, you ought to do this. So the point is, you never really know what opportunities you're going to have in life, and whether they're personal or professional. I would, I would say, you know, don't be so quick to say no to things that aren't on your radar, because those things that pop up in your life may be the opportunity that uh, it, may, it may totally change your life. This job has totally changed my life, and it's the best job I've ever had. And if I had said, you know, I don't want to go through the stress of that. I mean, you know, it is stressful. And I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. And any challenge or opportunity you may have may be far more challenging or stressful than you think you can handle. Uh, but be open to those opportunities that you that come your way. Just going to go with some of the questions that are in the, the chat box. Um, this one's from Beth. Uh, what enticing attributes do we have to offer young professionals not from the area? Uh, and how do we plan to draw people in and, and keep them here? Well, actually, that, that's a super question. I, I think um, one of the things that is really attractive about Evansville and the greater Evansville area is that you can come here. Maybe you're a college student. Maybe you're moving here as a young professional or you're here with your family, whatever. You have an opportunity to really get engaged at a high level at a, you know, if you're a student at UFE or USI and you really want to get plugged in to our city, again, whether it's through a faith community, a not-for-profit organization or local government, it's easy to do. Uh, it is easy to get plugged into a city, easier to get plugged into a city this size than say Indianapolis or Columbus or St. Louis or Chicago. Uh, and here you can get experience at a young age that will give you opportunities that may propel you to larger cities and greater incomes. Uh, in terms of promoting the community, one of the things that we're starting to see is, and the pandemic, oddly enough, has been uh, helpful in this regard, we're starting to hear people are going, you know what, I don't want to live in a New York anymore um, or a Chicago. It's, it's too big. Uh, there's too much risk for public health. Maybe they uh, don't like the, uh, the, the protest. Things happen at a different level here. The quality of life is better here. So we're starting to see that happen sort of uh, naturally. Uh, and we're starting to have some discussions on how to promote that without it, without it making it seem sort of unseemly. Mayor, can I add to that a little bit? Uh, Beth, I think that uh, when you ask what is uh, what enticing attributes do we have, I would say that you are one of them. I think that we all are. Uh, the young professional scene here in Evansville is what we make it. Um, you know, all too often we're quick to judge or, or uh, think, you know, and, and want more uh, 
and, and, and be critical. Uh, but the other part of that is that we actually have the ability to, to act upon that and to make it better and to make it more enticing for other young professionals who are coming up and uh, other young professionals who are uh, uh, considering uh, a city like Evansville uh, long term. Just to add on to that, uh, Annie uh, had another question, uh, which is great um, in terms of uh, a topic that we deal with a lot, regionalism. Uh, Mayor, are there, or Lloyd, are there any collaborations with uh, surrounding counties, uh, such as joint boards, uh, events, et cetera, to help uh, pull in locals? Yeah, so we, uh, we're working on regionalism all the time. Um, uh, right now, there is, a, and we've been very open about and transparent about this, that um, we're looking to merge uh, the chamber, the Growth Alliance of Greater Evansville, as well as um, the Economic Development Coalition of Southwest Indiana into one organization. We're looking at the merits of that. Um, when we stood up the, uh, we, by the way, we think that will make our region more attractive. It'll be easier for us to do um, uh, attraction and uh, business retention and expansion here. Um, we're also, um, I just had a, a little senior moment there. We're also working with um, uh, multiple counties in the region on projects like uh, the Ohio River crossing, the new I-69 bridge. We're in constant contact with our friends in Henderson about uh, how we can work together with Indianapolis, Frankfurt, and Washington to get funding for it. We're working with our partners in Warwick County on uh, transportation issues on the Lloyd Expressway. Uh, when we stood up the uh, COVID response fund, uh, back in March, April, um, um, we involved uh, five counties, Vandenberg, Spencer, Warwick, Posey, and Gibson. So there is uh, ongoing uh, communication and this long-term collaboration with multiple organizations and counties around here. I'm not sure. Are, are there any other questions from the on the chat box that I missed, Rachel or Brandon or Noah? No. I did I, see one at the very beginning from Brandon. Uh, did Steve and Noah also go three months with without a haircut? Um, <clears throat> I will. Uh, I, I'll do. I'll do. I'll do one here. I'll. I'll, I'll do a, a bonus share uh, to show you uh, what what the end game of of my. Uh, hair look like. Uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, that, that was that was right before I got my hair cut. And I think that might have been uh, well, it's, it was whenever we opened back up. I'm, I'm not sure the exact date. But but yeah, that was that was the end of, of, of my hair uh, growing uh, experience. Uh, I don't know if Steve wants to share his Steve, do you have your photo queued up? Uh, no, no, I don't. And I'm surprised the mayor has not commented on the whole haircut thing about, about, uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> you got I, a haircut during the shutdown? I'm not going to tell the soul. <laughs> I did not get an illegal haircut in the driveway. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, oh, and by the way, Noah is, never mind. Um, that your hair looks really, looks really nice, Noah. I'm glad you shared that with us. Um, any other questions from anybody uh, out there? Oh, here's one. Uh, Mayor, uh, do you have plans for cu cultural growth opportunities post COVID? Well, we're working on two right now. Um, one is the, the Deaconess Aquatic Center. In fact, we have a topping off ceremony, the last piece of steel. Is that tomorrow or Thursday? Uh, tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. So uh, really excited about that. That's a $30 million uh, investment. That's a public-private partnership. So when that is complete, we'll have an indoor competition pool 
uh, for swimming and diving and another pool for uh, recreational uh, and therapy, et cetera, and a splash park outside. Uh, that is uh, on track. We've had really great construction weather. Uh, that's on track for completion in the July timeframe. At uh, Mesker Park Zoo and Botanic Garden, we've continued with our uh, Penguins of Patagonia exhibit. Uh, it is also scheduled to open in the July, August timeframe. Uh, it is really exciting. It's a, about a $7 million project. We got a nice grant from the State Department of Tourism. We've raised a lot of money uh, privately. Wayne and Beth Kennedy are the title sponsors to that. Uh, so, in fact, we just learned uh, yesterday that the first penguins will be arriving on property at the zoo beginning uh, this month. Um, so we'll have, uh, I think, 18 to 24 penguins at any one time. Uh, this is a, kind of a different penguin exhibit. You'll actually be able to feed the penguins. So we're excited about that. We, we uh, you know, there were people who probably, you know, probably, there were people who thought we should have paused those projects. Um, but I really felt uh, two things. One, we found the financial means to continue them. And secondly, I thought that when the pandemic was sort of behind us or getting to be behind us, people would want some new uh, and exciting outlets. And I think, uh, I think the community will, will really like that, both of those projects. Hey, Mayor, um, one of the big events that you always participate in, uh, Jennifer uh, wanted to thank you for your participation in the ARC uh, of Evansville's really big show. And um, wanted to know, are you planning on participating in the 2021 show? Uh, yes, so I, I love doing that because I'm just there's enough ham in me uh, that uh, I, I enjoy either singing, dancing, trying to do that, trying to be part of a comedic skit with Jeff Lyons. Um, this will be uh, will be a virtual uh, event in um, February. Uh, we've already committed to participating again. I think it's a little more serious uh, than usual, but yeah, we are participating. Love doing that. Great. Uh, any any other questions from anybody? Okay. Well, hey, I, I just want to thank you all for uh, being a part of the Young Professional Alliance um, and a part of the Chamber of Commerce. It, it's an important organization and a great way to stay connected and uh, to stay engaged in the community. So. Um, thank you for your time, and uh, Rachel, uh, I will hand it back over to you. Thank you all for your time. Before you log off, if you don't mind to click on the poll in your toolbox and provide us with some feedback, and we just have a little gift card giveaway for someone who attended, and today Brad Mangold, I'm not sure if that's how I say it, but you are going to win a Pangea gift card, so they are one of our members and a super fun local restaurant. I believe the mayor might as well like Pangea. Tina told me that she's seen you there. So um, I will email you Brad and send you that. Other than that, thank you all so much for your time and Mayor Steve and Noah, we know you all are very busy people and it means a lot and um, is very admirable as you all who are leading our community that you took the time to send it with us young professionals today. So we sincerely appreciate your time and just you being so transparent and fun. So thank you all so much. Have a great Tuesday. Thank you. Yeah.